there you go, the new iMac with M3 here in the Tech Today studios. Now, the unboxing process was quite an intricate one. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe not my bad acting. Well, it was bad acting because I enjoyed every minute of it personally and it wasn't that heavy. That box seemed heavy, but once you actually unbox it, this, the Magic Keyboard, which is a work of art, is perhaps lighter than the granola bar I have in the morning. The Magic Mouse and the trackpad are also very light. And this, the iMac display, is under four and a half kilos, under five kilos. That means that this can be the ideal desktop computer in your living room when you're sharing it with the kids. A family computer, maybe even in your kitchen, maybe in your bedroom. 24 inches of pure beauty. You get it in seven colors. This one, of course, is this golden sort of yellow. True tone technology from Apple, so the display, the colors are very vivid. The saturation is just about right, but it also comes with 500 nits of brightness. Now, if you were to compare this to a high-end gaming monitor, maybe on paper, it doesn't sound that impressive. But if you have it in the flesh, like we do over here in the Tech Today studio, this device performs really well. I've been watching a lot of content on it, movies as well. It has six speakers right over here, a 1080p FaceTime camera, which can do all sorts of cool things. And this really does get the job done. Now, the speaker system is fairly decent. The sound output is all right. But if you want to pair this with an external speaker, you can do that as well. It has fans at the bottom over here. And if you consider the fact that with that advanced chipset, they have a cooling system with these new iMacs, you can understand where Apple is headed with this particular lineup. But this particular device has performed really well when it comes to gaming. And that is a big push by Apple as well, because at the heart of it is M3. And this is a little different, although it looks exactly the same as the previous iMac from 2021. A lot of people aren't happy about some of the design upgrades, which never happened. For instance, the chin over here, well, that could have been something they could have worked on. And this white bezel has been spoken about a lot. Now, when it comes to consuming content on the new iMac, you have these six downward facing speakers and two force cancelling woofers. Fairly decent audio, but you can use the four ports at the back. There's two USB 3 ports and two of them on this particular variant with Thunderbolt functionality right here. They've not done much around. There's a headphone jack on the right side. But remember, if you're using these new iMacs, they do come with Dolby Atmos spatial audio support when you're using Apple TV and Apple Music. So that can be quite an interesting experience with this family computer. Now, we know that the unboxing experience with Apple products is always a very premium one, but I thoroughly enjoyed unboxing this because there's so many goodies coming out of this top spec iMac setup. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about what came out of the box was this particular magic keyboard. It comes with Touch ID and that's an absolute game changer because you can switch profiles. Maybe your kids want to use it, your sister wants to use it, your wife wants to use it, your mom wants to use it. You can do that via Touch ID, different profiles, authenticate purchases as well. It's really embedded and integrated into the keyboard very well. It's very light as well, but given it's 2023 and iPhones now come with USB-C ports, one thing worth mentioning, the first time I'm gonna say this, is that this is charged using a lightning cable. Now, when you're talking about this particular trackpad, I think this is a game changer. I've been using this to edit content, which this can do to no end. It can take several streams of 4K content, do all sorts of things with ProRes video. Now, the second time I'm gonna be pointing that out is with the Magic Mouse. Again, it comes with a lightning port. The color looks amazing. Ergonomically, it's great. But a lot of people complain about using this mouse, especially if they're doing complex tasks like editing or color grading. Then this one is, well, a matter of choice. It's very subjective. So what's the other thing that Apple's put in the box with this color coordinated set? Well, it is a USB-C to lightning cable. Now, when you talk about the iMac by itself, it houses the M3. The M3 is no joke. Now, the M3, which is the first Apple Silicon based on a three nanometer architecture, that is mind boggling in terms of how small and how much stuff they've packed into that tiny real estate, well, is what 
this particular device is powered by. It's compact, it is very, very slim, and it can go to most places that my MacBook 16 inch can go as well within a house or a studio. Now, I told you about the editing capabilities, tossing in all those graphics and multiple streams of 4K, but that won't be everyone's use case. You could take the base model, which is a lot cheaper, and you could get the job done as a family computer. It's still running on M3. The only problem is with 256 GB of storage or a lower storage variant option, you will be yearning for more space. So that's the real trick. Apple gives you all the basics, but then you're tempted to upgrade. This one is the high spec version in terms of storage. It's two terabytes and 24 gigs of memory. But the M3 by itself, let me give you some numbers is scary fast. That's what they call the event compared to the M1. Now the iMac was last available in the M1 chip. The M2, which came out the last year, we didn't see an iMac with it, of course. So it's a leapfrog the M series straight to the M3. So even Apple is comparing the M3 to the M1. Is that an apples and apples or an apples and orange comparison? But let me tell you in pure numbers what your daily computing task would look like. If you're going to be making spreadsheets for your boss on Excel, it will be 30% faster than the M1, any M1 device you have. If you're talking about using your browser, maybe Safari, again, 30% faster. If you're talking about using Photoshop or a video editing tool, iMovie or maybe FCP, it'll be twice as fast in terms of editing, rendering, and that sort of performance. Basically, if you take an M3 iMac and you put it up against an M1 iMac from a couple of years ago, it'll look exactly the same. But when it has to perform, this guy will perform twice as fast. That's 2x as fast. And that just shows how technology has been growing exponentially, especially when it comes to companies like Apple from Cupertino. Now, let me tell you a little bit more about this iMac when it comes to gaming, because Apple is not a company that you associate with gaming. But for the past couple of years, they've made announcements at Apple events, which seem to be pointing in another direction. Now, they have that sort of hardware and software capability, but can they put it all together? That's the real question. In terms of performance, this guy is capable of all of it. And that's the big jump from an M1 iMac in itself. Each year, Apple Silicon is getting better and better. All benchmark tests, just generally user experience, the way they optimize with their software. You now have widgets with this. If I put this in lock mode right now, you'll see how all of this becomes a drone shot, a very animated screensaver. And that's absolutely gorgeous. Really enhances the family uh, user experience. But that gaming push comes from the M3. What the M3 can do is stuff like dynamic caching, hardware accelerated ray tracing, which means that it can give consoles a run for their money. Now, for instance, when you're playing a game on the M3, it switches into game mode, stuff you haven't seen on Apple devices that often. We've seen that with a bunch of Android devices, but here it means a lot's happening at the back end as well. Dynamic caching. What does that mean? It means that the M3 chip now intelligently uses the GPU's resources for that particular game to give you more output, which means gaming will be super smooth and it will be visually impressive. So the company claims that all of this will make frame rates get a 50% boost too. So as we wrap it all up, we'll need to tell you the price and that's where it gets most confusing. So you might want to put on your seat belts and get some coffee for this because the base model of the iMac is 1,35,000 rupees. But then I'll tell you how that spectrum goes to the other end with this one, which is all the bells and whistles, two terabyte of storage, 24 gigs of memory, this one goes up to nearly 2,85,000 rupees. But why the discrepancy? The base model will come with an 8-core CPU, an 8-core GPU, 8 gigs of unified memory, and 256 GB of storage. With this particular device, if you're using it just to browse around and maybe use everything on the cloud, you can get away with it. But it's capable of so much more, so you might need to go for a mid-spec variant. Obviously, the base model will only come with a magic keyboard. You wouldn't get some of the other accessories. You need to pay for each thing. So there is a mid-spec variant within the lineup as well, which costs 1,75,000 rupees. It comes with an 8-core CPU, a 10-core GPU, 512 gigs of storage. So that's double the storage, and it comes with 8 GB of unified memory. What's good about that is that you get this particular display, gigabit Ethernet, which is in the power cable itself and a magic keyboard with Touch ID. So all in all, if you pick the right variant, bump up the RAM, you have an ideal family computer, which you can drag to the bedroom, to the kitchen, or keep in the hall for the family to use. The new iMac 2023 with the powerful, mighty M3 chipset inside, exclusively here on Tech Today.
If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.